this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Jaguar I-PACE, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. So, let's start with the smart key. Now, lock and unlock seem pretty obvious, with the deployable door handles responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock. Now, this means the car cannot be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. This simple step is crucial to keeping your vehicle secure. Always double lock, either from the key fob or via tapping the door handle twice for vehicles with keyless entry. You'll hear a beep to confirm this is done successfully. Next, there's a button to unlock just the boot. If you have a power tailgate, this will open or close the tailgate automatically, so do ensure that there is space for it to safely operate. There are sensors that will stop it if obstructed, but, you know, I would test that with my arm rather than my head. Power tailgates can also be operated by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, and a button on the back of the tailgate itself. If you wish to adjust the height the tailgate opens to, if, for example, you have a garage with a low ceiling, reposition the tailgate to the desired height, Hold the button on the outside of the tailgate until you hear a beep. This will store that height to memory. If you have the hands-free gesture tailgate, so long as the smart key is in your pocket, sweeping your foot under the rear corner of the car will trigger the tailgate to open or close. Next, there's a button to open the front storage area, or frunk as it's known. This can also be opened with a button by the driver's knee. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by holding the button for three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all of the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the setting menus on the main touchscreen. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within a foot or so of the car, you can just press the button on the door handle and the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, press the same button to secure the vehicle. All our latest models have a Jaguar in control secure vehicle tracker fitted and your retailer will have performed the first steps in the setup process. You should have received an in control email inviting you to activate the tracker and it's worth checking your junk folder if you haven't seen it. The activation process takes less than two minutes and once complete and the product is activated you can download the certificate from within the in control portal. If your insurer wishes to see proof of an activated tracker, simply go to the Your In Control Services section to find it. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric, using the joystick on the right hand side of the steering column, or manual. Pull the lever on the underside of the steering column down, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then push the lever up to lock the steering wheel in place. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the left and right buttons and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, pushing both buttons together will fold the mirrors in. Useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything is adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press the M button and then within five seconds press one of the numbered memory settings. You'll hear a chime to confirm that it's saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing these numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. Locking the operation of windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks of the rear doors. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull towards you for screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. 
If your car is fitted with auto high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam illumination everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control. Press set when travelling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up but when you release it will return to the set speed. Nudging the rocker switch up or down will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been cancelled, pressing resume will return the car to its last set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. If they're travelling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The buttons on the left and right will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be travelling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within three seconds, your car will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that and you'll need to give the car permission to go with just a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. If you wish to turn off the adaptive function of cruise control, reduce the distance setting to a minimum and then press the reduce distance button again. The car will now hold speed without automatically adjusting it. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. The final control toggles the heated steering wheel on and off. On the left side, the roller controls volume and buttons either side skip tracks or change radio stations. Pressing in on the roller triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of the head-up display, trip information, driver display layout, vehicle airbags and tyre pressures, and media selection. The roller and arrow buttons control navigation through these menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer an incoming call, end a current call, or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. Voice control can now be initiated with a wake-up phrase. You'll need to enable this via PIVIS settings. You may also want to disable confirmations if you're using this. Now initially this is set to Hey Jaguar, but you can also set a name of your choice, e.g. Hey Sophie. Names with at least two to three syllables work best. The system uses natural language understanding, so commands could be Hey Jaguar, call David's mobile. Hey Jaguar, take me to Buckingham Palace. Hey Jaguar, tune to BBC Radio 2, or Hey Jaguar, increase the cabin temperature. You can also access the voice control system via a quick press on the voice control button. Just wait for the chime before you speak. In this case, after the ready confirmation, you can use the same commands, but without prefixing the phrase with Hey Jaguar. To make the most of the advanced connectivity features offered by iPACE, you'll need an in-control account. If you don't already have one, you can create one at jaguarincontrol.com slash owner. To add the car to your account, it will need to be parked close by in an area with good signal. When prompted, add the iPACE to your account by pressing and holding the roadside assistance button located in the overhead console until the light flashes at a slower rate. This should take around 10 seconds. You have 60 minutes to complete this step. Then return to the website and follow instructions to complete the registration. Download the Jaguar Remote app to your phone and sign in with your in-control account details. This will allow you to access information about the charging state of the battery, locate the vehicle, lock and unlock it remotely, and initiate remote climate to pre-warm the cabin and bring the battery to its most efficient operating temperature. Starting the car is as simple as pressing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the car will switch on, ready to drive. Now, of course, as there's no engine, you won't hear any familiar startup sounds, but you will hear an audible confirmation the vehicle is ready. When you first switch the car on, the main 10-inch touchscreen will greet you, and at the bottom of the screen there is an option to set up your vehicle. We highly recommend you click on this, as the system will walk you through a few key steps to streamline the setup process. This will lead you to select the choice of language, and from here, you'll be prompted to add a name for your personal profile and then to input your in-control account details. 
Each authorised user of the vehicle can have their own profile linked to their own in-control account. When you've done this, you may receive a message saying there is no internet connection and giving you the option to enable connectivity. Select this and then switch on mobile data and agree to the terms and conditions. Once you've enabled mobile data, return to the sign-in screen by pressing the X at the bottom right of the screen. Tap the sign-in button and when sign-in has completed, you'll be given the option to set a four-digit passcode to secure your data and then the option to remember this passcode to automatically sign you in whenever you start the vehicle. Pivi will then prompt you to pair a phone. Now on your phone, simply go to Settings and then Bluetooth and search for a new device. Select Jaguar I-PACE and then confirm pairing on both your phone screen and then the Pivi screen. There are options to enable both audio streaming and telephone communications. For display and reading of text messages, it may be necessary to select the Jaguar I-PACE Bluetooth device on your phone and then select Enable Notifications or Text Messages. You can then pair additional phones to the system or continue. There's always the function to add more phones later. Pivi allows two phones to be connected simultaneously, for example, work and personal phones. You can answer the call via the vehicle's touchscreen. For making calls, you can switch between focused phones directly from Pivi's home screen. And finally, Pivi will prompt you to select your favourite radio stations to add to your favourites list. Following a short animation showing a few tips of how to navigate Pivi, the main home page will appear. The setup wizard will be offered on the greeting screen every time you start the vehicle. Multiple drivers and profiles can be added and Pivi will remember each driver's preferences to deliver a personal experience. Pivi Pro's new home screen has been designed to allow direct access to the features and information you use most. Depending on your preferences, this allows 80% to 90% of the tasks you use to be carried out directly from a single screen in two taps or less. By default, Pivi Pro's new home screen offers direct access to navigation, media and telephone, and the most common features and information associated with each. Pivi offers a consistent, logical interface. On the left-hand side, there is the clock and connectivity details, and below that, shortcuts for the standard surround cameras and settings. On the right-hand side, you can switch between driver profiles, jump straight to navigation, phone or media from virtually anywhere in the system, or launch one of the additional apps available. Pressing the cog icon will take you into settings, where you can find options for connectivity, languages, and many vehicle safety features. It's worth looking through these to understand the full range of customization features available. Quick Settings allows you to choose a dark or light display theme and adjust screen brightness. The next tab is Context Sensitive, presenting options for the application you jumped here from. So if you press the Settings icon whilst in the Navigation app, it will say Navigation. Coming from the Home screen, it gives options for the Home screen layout. Selecting All takes you into options for Driver Profiles. Connectivity, which includes Bluetooth, mobile data, Wi-Fi connection and settings for CarPlay and Android Auto. Vehicle, which allows configuration of drive assistance features like lane keeping and parking aids, security features, exterior light settings, which includes headlamp delay and setting the lights for driving abroad. Convenience, which controls the global opening and closing of the windows. And brake hold, which affects the assistance you receive when stopping on an incline. Units allows customization of display units. And My Vehicle shows the next anticipated service date and options for active sound design, which in the absence of any engine noise provides acoustic feedback reflecting the acceleration of the vehicle. Back to the home screen. Selecting the tiles view shows all available applications on the system. Now these can be added to the home screen by swiping left and selecting the edit icon. Then tap or drag the desired tile from the bottom row to the top reordering them to your preference, and when you return to the home screen, you can swipe through all the tiles. Many tiles show live information. Energy Impact breaks down the energy usage of the various systems on iPACE and shows how they impact on range, whilst the EV tile shows how far you can go on the current charge and allows selection of regenerative braking mode and vehicle creep, which affects whether you'll start moving forward when you release the foot brake or whether it will always require input on the accelerator. Let's look at the main three tiles. If no phone is connected, the phone tile will prompt you to pair a device. With the phone connected, the phone tile shows which of the connected phones is currently active for outgoing calls. Options below 
allow you to choose between connected devices for outgoing calls, dial voicemail, or access recent call contacts. And just tapping on one of these contacts from the list will immediately call that contact right from the home screen. Connecting a phone with a USB cable enables Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Both are standard on iPACE, although some Android phones may require the free Android Auto app to be installed. You may also need to switch the service on for your device by going to Settings, All, Connectivity, and then either CarPlay or Android Auto. This allows the control of compatible phone apps via the main screen. Most music playing and podcast apps are supported, as well as streaming services like BBC Sounds and Scala Radio. Connecting your phone in this way also allows voice access to your phone assistant using a long press on the steering wheel button. Send text message to Dad. What do you want to say? I'll be with you in two hours. Your message to Dad says I'll be with you in two hours. The next tile to look at is media. The home screen shows what is playing along with buttons for source and favourites radio stations. Favourites can contain DAB, FM and AM based stations. There's also an icon to instantly mute or pause playback. You can even access your playlist or upcoming music list if supported by your phone's music player. Clicking on the media icon launches the media play screen, providing access to the full station list. Tapping stars will add them to your favourites. The phone I've just added will also now show as a source, jumping into the last audio played on the device. Browse will allow access to the full range of songs, artists and albums available on the phone. And again, many selections can be made using the voice control system. The last of the three main tiles to examine is navigation. Now with no destination set, the home screen provides shortcuts to set home as your destination, search and direct access to your recent destinations. Just click on a destination from the list and the route will be calculated and guidance start in around a second. Pressing search takes you to the full screen navigation view where you can click on a search category. Selecting one of these will display nearby options and give access to ratings and reviews if available. Parking options will even show the hourly rate for the car park. Charging stations can be manually searched from the navigation page by pressing the EV button. Whichever way a destination is chosen, just clicking on Go will calculate the route according to your preferences in navigation settings. If you prefer, you can click on Routes to choose between the fastest, shortest and the most economical route options. Instead of searching by category, you can input a search term wherever you see the search box in navigation. Now this can be a place name, place type like an Italian restaurant or an address or postcode. Destinations can also be easily set by voice. Hey Jaguar, take me to 33 Baker Street, London. 33 Baker Street, London. You can say I'm finished to set the location or changed followed by the address item you wish to edit. As well as appearing on the main 10 inch touchscreen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the interactive driver display. This can be reconfigured by pressing menu and selecting display and then layout to choose between a one or two dial display with info panels that can be configured to show the map or media information or do away with the dials for a clear, streamlined digital layout. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. The full screen map view can also display additional information such as traffic incidents en route or a list of upcoming manoeuvres. With the destination set, the home screen's navigation tile options change to cancel guidance, mute or unmute voice turn-by-turn -turn instructions, and access to en-route information. Tapping on this displays a list of traffic incidents and the associated delay, or rest stops, as well as charging stations available along your current route. Simply click on a charge station from the list for it to be added to your route as a waypoint. Pivi Pro learns your regular journeys. Now on startup, the navigation tile will display up to three predicted destinations, each with an estimated time of arrival, taking into account your usual driving style and current traffic conditions. If you sometimes drive to the same destination using different routes, it will also identify which route is the fastest based on current traffic conditions. Tapping on the destination shown in the navigation home screen tile confirms this as the intended destination. For frequently used routes, the system displays the route but doesn't provide turn-by-turn -turn voice instructions. 
However, if you enable the Smart Voice Guidance feature in Navigation Settings, the system will announce any issues on your commute and provide alternative route guidance. If this results in driving on unfamiliar roads, the system will automatically enable voice guidance. On returning to familiar roads, the system will automatically mute voice guidance, so you can fully enjoy the iPaces sound system or the hush of the almost silent electric powertrain. An additional navigation setting labelled Auto Start Commutes even allows the automatic initiation of your most regular journeys. This means you can start your morning commute and still get traffic updates without having to press any buttons except the one you use to start the car. If your destination cannot be reached with the current state of charge, iPACE will look for charging points along the route and add them into your journey. Where information is available, it'll show which company runs each station, how much it costs to charge there and what the rate of charge available will be. iPACE can accept charge rates up to 100 kilowatts and will suggest how long you need to charge in order to gain enough range to comfortably reach your destination. It will incorporate charging time into the overall journey time to give an estimated time of arrival at your destination. iPACE will also alert you before you reach a point of no return where there will be no known charging points within range. iPACE is equipped with a 4G data connection, providing over-the-air performance updates of the infotainment and other vehicle systems, and allows the addition of new features over time. When an update is available, it'll alert the driver via the menu touchscreen and ask for your permission to update when you complete your journey. Some updates may require the vehicle to be switched off and locked while the update is carried out. For convenience, these updates can be scheduled for a suitable time within a two-week period. The data connection also enables a variety of connected navigation features and services, such as real-time traffic information, live EV charging station availability, parking availability, safety camera locations, live search, as well as monthly navigation map updates. It also enables the online pack, which allows synchronization and streaming from various online accounts, including Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn for entertainment, and Google or Microsoft calendars. You can also view weather at your destination and even pay for parking from the vehicle's touchscreen using Ringo. To set this up, go to the app launcher, select Connect Accounts, and then select the type of account you wish to connect. You'll then be given the option of an emailed link or a QR code. Simply scan this with a phone that has these accounts already added and Pivi will do the rest. Once added, Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn will show up as additional media sources alongside your phone and radio bands. The Agenda app allows you to set the location of an appointment in your calendar as the destination with just one tap or call the meeting organiser with one tap if you're running late. There's no need for additional mobile data contracts or SIM cards. If there's a valid active subscription, mobile data is included via a built-in SIM card. The connected navigation subscription is included for three years. InControl Remote, which allows remote access to your vehicle via the remote app, includes a three-year subscription, whilst the online pack is included for an initial one year. On renewal of a subscription, the associated data plan required is also renewed. Back to the home screen. The camera icon reveals the 3D surround camera views that can simulate an overhead view as well as a full 360 degree surround view from outside the vehicle. Each of the camera icons on the overhead view presents a different view allowing you to switch between different virtual camera positions for a better view. Front and rear cameras can also be selected in ultra-wide view, so when pulling out of a blind junction or reversing out of a tight parking space, you have enhanced vision left and right. The icon on the upper left of the camera screen initiates a quick squirt from the washer system to remove road spray from the rear camera. Below the main touchscreen are dials for climate control. These can be set independently for driver and passenger, or locked together by pressing sync. Pressing the dials in will modify the dial to control heated seats. Between the dials, you'll find controls for heated front and rear screens and air recirculation. The lower touchscreen, fitted as standard on SE and HSE and available as an option on S, provides a dedicated graphical interface for the climate and seat comfort systems. iPACE only has one gear, so there isn't a gearbox as such. The buttons on the center console allow you to simply select Drive, Neutral, Reverse and Park just by holding the brake and pressing the button. 
the response when you put your foot down in iPACE is incredible, with 696 newton meters of torque propelling you forward. But when you take your foot off the accelerator, there's a braking effect from the regenerative braking system. This can be adjusted by selecting the EV tile and selecting high or low. A high allows up to 0.2 G of braking from releasing the throttle, so in many situations it allows near one pedal driving and extends the range by maximizing the kinetic energy recovered to recharge the battery. Many factors will affect the range that iPACE delivers. Air resistance increases exponentially with speed, so faster motorway speeds will reduce the range. In my experience, the difference in range driving at 60 miles an hour compared to 70 miles an hour can be as much as 20%. Smooth driving with gentle braking will allow the iPACE to conserve power and harvest the maximum kinetic energy when slowing down. The driving style tile shows an analysis of how driving style affects range, whilst energy impact shows the power usage of different systems on the car. iPACE has a range of driving modes, selectable with buttons on the centre console. Comfort is standard and the buttons cycle through the Eco, Dynamic and Rain Ice Snow modes, displaying the selection on the information panel. Further driving aids such as All Surface Progress Control give superb control on difficult surfaces. Just below these buttons are the control for air suspension, if this is fitted. As standard, iPACE will automatically lower 40mm to allow easy access in and out of the vehicle. When needed, the controls raise the suspension 50mm to give a maximum wading depth of 550mm and ground clearance of 235mm. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you switch the engine off. A manual override control is located by the driver's knee. This can be used to slow the vehicle in the unlikely event of brake failure. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detect other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. Cars fitted with adaptive cruise control have a high-speed emergency braking system. The lane keep system will provide a torque steer back into the lane if the car thinks you're drifting beyond the lane markers, so it's important to indicate when changing lane. If blind spot assist is fitted, the door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system, lighting up when a vehicle is travelling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. These driver aids are designed to intervene when there is no input from the driver, which is surprisingly hard to simulate, so please don't try to test these systems. Any input from the driver will override them, and they do not reduce the driver's responsibility to drive safely and attentively. They can be deactivated, but as all of them have been shown to save lives, both inside and outside the vehicle, they're switched on by default, and we recommend leaving them that way. For additional safety, in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the battery system is isolated, the car will automatically contact emergency services, sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right-hand button above the rear-view mirror. The left-hand button summons breakdown assistance. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. The charging port is on the passenger side. For AC charging, simply plug the Type 2 plug into the socket. If charging at home, plug the cable into the power and then plug into the car. The LED indicator next to the socket will turn white to give some illumination whilst plugging in and start flashing as it makes the connection. When charging starts, the LED will flash green, changing to solid green when charging is complete. A red light indicates a problem charging. When you lock the car, the cable will lock in place and it's not possible to engage drive when the cable is connected. To remove the cable, simply unlock the car and press the release button next to the charging socket. For fast DC charging, the rubber cover beneath the charge socket needs to be removed to reveal the two large diameter ports that can accept high voltage DC input from CCS chargers. Public charging stations will have individual instructions for payment with use and always have the DC charging cable attached to them. The remote app provides monitoring of many systems. When you first run the app, there's a quick start guide to aid setup and then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, gives live information on charging status and current range, reports the last parked location of the car so you can always find your way back to it, and it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet, useful if you're keeping track of mileage for business expenses.
The batteries in iPACE work most efficiently at a temperature of 22 degrees. In the UK, it's unlikely they'll be at this temperature most mornings. Preconditioning brings both the cabin and the battery to this temperature so that iPACE can maximise available range. This can be programmed in advance. Tap on the EV tile and then select Vehicle Precondition. And you'll be able to set either one-off or recurring departure times. And so long as the car is plugged into power, iPACE will ensure both cabin and batteries are warmed to optimum temperature. The same screen will allow you to set preferred charging times to make use of any low-rate electricity tariffs. If your schedule doesn't allow for this level of planning, the remote app has a control to trigger preconditioning. Just press the button on your phone 20 minutes before heading out, and so long as the iPACE is plugged into power, it will de-ice itself and warm up to prepare for departure. If cabin air ionisation is fitted, the remote app will also have the option to purify the cabin air before entering the vehicle. Now this video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the videos on our YouTube channel to find out more or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Jaguar iPACE.